Welcome to the advanced 3ds Max geometry import tutorial for Ventus. I already prepared my project with just an orbit camera. I did set the distance to 400 and applied an axis node with an initial rotation of 90 degrees on the x axis. Ok, let's switch over to Max. I'm gonna load a decent scene, an augmented reality scene for sports graphics. Well, just a small part of it. The final scene has some hundreds of objects more, containing textures and materials as well as groups, links, customized pivots and so on and so on. This file here has 22 or 23 polygonal objects. The one arm with the teapot team logo is linked like a robotic arm. I applied six simple materials just to showcase a model with more than one material. The model itself has separate meshes. The arrows on the top of the truss, the truss itself, the team logo robotic arm, which is also made of many separate geometries, and so on. And like I already mentioned it, the robotic arm is linked, like a real robotic arm. So it's easy to animate it just with rotations. Whoops, I have to change the rotation mode to respect the local rotation. As you see, I'm just playing around but it's a nice basic setup to animate the arm. All objects are converted into polygonal objects, better editable polys. You may use procedural objects, but this is a rare case. Well, I assigned the materials randomly, just to show off a bit of variation and to visualize the different subsets later. Ok, let's export that model. I select all. Usually I choose to select geometry only and select all, hit export, export selected. I export this model as an open collada file. Just google for open collada if you missed the basic tutorial. Ok, export is quickly done thanks to the open collada exporter. Let's switch back to Ventus. Press file, import. Geometry and choose your file. The import preview will open up and you will see a preview of your geometry. We will focus on subsets now. We have three different types of import options and how to create subsets. The most common setting is to choose subset based on original hierarchy. Our actual imported file contains 23 objects Therefore, we will have 23 subsets. Every object gets an own subset. If you like to compare, switch back to Max, select all geometries and have a look at the object's selection count. It's 23, a brilliant number. 23, like the subset count on the Ventus import preview. Every object gets a unique subset ID. The arrows, the truss, the spots and so on. This doesn't mean each element of an object gets an own subset number, just the object. If you split an object into 100 elements, still you will have one object. You would need to detach it to an own object. If you decide to use subset based on materials, you will notice we have just 6 subsets. In our case, we have just 6 materials used and applied inside of Max. The last option is single subset. This will discard anything material related. It will handle the complete imported geometry as one mesh. You are not able to block or disable any single object in this case. Nor you are able to assign a specific color or texture to just one of the objects. Cool. Let's import each case. I import this model now as a subset based on original hierarchy and give it a unique name. Import the same model again, but this time with subset based on materials. Again in the unique name. And finally the same model as single subset. Unique name.
So I place these models behind the 90-ish axis to have them in the correct rotation. Since it uses the exported file name instead of the unique name we gave in the save process, we have to rename the hierarchy containers properly. Therefore I need to have a peek inside to see which one reflects the original hierarchy, the base on materials and single subset. Ok, quick renaming here. So I block the models to have just one at a time in the renderer window. Let's check out the single subset model. If you look into the hierarchy container, you will get the clue. So, inside the mesh loader properties, you can see that while using the single subset mode, it will generate a mesh with just a single subset ID or number. Zero in this case. It creates a single material, which applies to the complete model. So if you change the color of that material, the whole object gets colored. So far, so good. Let's check the subset based on materials model. But beforehand, we compare the visual appearance of the subset based on materials model and the subset based on hierarchy model. I put them both next to each other and unblock them. You see, there is no real visual difference. The arm looks a bit different, but this is just because of the perspective but focus on the material colors. Both models are exactly the same, visually the same. Technically, there is a big difference. Ok, we revert the placement, block the hierarchy model and have a look inside the subset based on materials container. Inside the container you see 6 axes, 6 materials and 6 mesh loaders. Remember, the amount of subsets was 6 while the import and we had just 6 materials assigned inside of Max. Ventus has put all objects into one subset related to the material. That means every object which had the blue material assigned is inside a unique subset. If you rotate now the axis in front of the blue material, all related objects share one bounding box. Therefore the rotation center is now the center of that bounding box. It discards any pivot changes made in Max. You should keep that in mind. The advantage of importing models with subset based on materials are you can have metallic objects share a single material. You don't need to manually sort the objects under the materials node. Any changes made to the material affect all of the objects inside the subset. Same goes for a texture. Or if you want to block a certain subset, you just need to block it. Possibilities are kinda endless and may open up a cleaner structure. Also, for special effects like the glare bloom, it's kinda handy to have all metallic objects in one subset, but separate from other materials. Ok, now to the subset based on original hierarchy. Don't let the hierarchy inside the container scare you away. We will cover now two things. The one is a basic to have every object separate, the other is grouping and linked objects inside of Max. If you look through my hierarchy, you see that every object has its own axis, its own material and its own mesh loader. The tree structure also reflects the dependencies of the linked object hierarchy, which I made inside of 3ds Max. This one here is a robotic arm, made of the arm itself, which has some object, as well as the team text, the teapot, uh, team logo, the trust system, the spots and so on. As a side note, since this hierarchy is very deep and wastes space if you're not working on that arm, you can collapse the tree by right clicking on the axis. This will collapse everything behind and keeps the hierarchy view clear. Ok, the naming of the 3ds Max objects are reflected at the very first axis, as you see the arrows, the truss and the arrow sign itself. I didn't group them or link to them so they are on top of the tree and independent. You can block them or do whatever you want to do with them without affecting anything else inside the container. Well, as already mentioned, each object of the arm has its own axis. If I rotate now the arm left 06 which is the clamp that holds the display of the team, 
all other objects which has been linked inside of 3ds Max to that clamp will rotate too. If I rotate the very first axis of that robot arm, the complete arm rotates respectively. So it acts like a very simple bone system and it will let you animate that arm easy inside of Ventus. Since it is an robotic arm and the arm is restricted in its movement axis, it's kinda easy to animate it inside of Ventus. Do yourself a favor and name the objects properly, else you will waste a lot of time figuring out which axis relates to which object. So, how did I keep that hierarchy? Let's get back to our lovely Max. As you see, the pivots are an important part in this case. The local pivots are the rotation centers of Ventus. Same goes for translations. But in our case, local rotations are very important. You can freely reposition the local pivots inside of Max. If you move the pivots and export the geometry, Ventus will take the pivot position and will rotate your geometry around that point. Links and dependencies if you import your geometry with subset based on original hierarchy, Ventus keeps also the link hierarchy you made in 3ds Max. I unlink the team logo plate and all its related or linked objects. If I rotate the clamp now, I will just rotate the clamp and the cubes, which are elements of the clamp, but nothing else will rotate. If I now start to link, in this case the truss and so on, to the clamp, and I start to rotate the clamp again, every object which is linked to the clamp will rotate relative to the clamp. So, with this way, you don't need to combine everything into one mesh. You just link them and still have everything unique, like materials, textures, UV sets and so on. The next advantage is, you can still animate each object individually inside of Ventus.